Before, uh, we are going to start with Qiyas again. Uh, we had this lesson before, uh, but not with the brothers here. But before I go there, inshallah, I will uh, just mention some mistakes that uh, the Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed Muhammad have done. The reason is, it's not that we are trying to look mistakes of people. Hmm? But then, when you say a person, when you say, oh, this man, uh, when you tell, uh, tell someone, oh, Qiyas is, is wrong, when you say, oh, who said this? Ibn Hazm. The one who says this and this, and brings some mistakes that he has done. So before we go to the mistakes of Ibn Hazm, we just see, huh? that everybody is the same people can't do mistakes huh? so really if you someone wants to criticize someone he has to criticize everybody hmm? I just give this example here now for example Imam Abu Hanifa hmm? and we have nothing against Abu Hanifa Abu Hanifa and Malik and Shafi'i and Ahmed ibn Hanbal hmm? the thing that we have common between us and them but we are people who follow the Prophet only. Abu Hanifa never had an Imam. He was not Umar, Abu Bakr, uh, Hassan Basri, or huh? he was calling himself Muslim. He didn't have. He never said that I have an Imam that I have to follow in uh, in all cases. Same thing was Malik. Same thing was Shafi'i. But the people who choose to follow these four people. Huh? with no dalil, without no proof in when they are right and when they are wrong the problem is with these people these people who choose to be Hanafis or Shafi'is or Malikis when they not have no proof for that and for that reason they will try to make these people right no matter what there is one person called Shamsuddin al-Sarkhasi Shamsuddin al-Sarkhasi this person, he is called, the, the way, the, 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 the title they give him, they call him Shamsul A'imma. Shamsul A'imma, the son of the Imams. The majority of Ahnaf don't really follow the Madhab of Abu Hanifa. They follow what this man says. What does this man say? This man say, any hadith. Any ayah from the book of Allah that contradicts what Abu Hanifa has said. He said it clearly in the book of Usul that he wrote and that his people follow. It's in his book, the Kitab of Mabsut. He said, any ayah in the book of Allah or any hadith that is in from the Prophet that contradicts what Abu Hanifa has said is either, either invalid or mansukh hmm? or abrogated hmm? or should be, shouldn't be taken. Ayah or hadith that contradict the words of Abu Hanifa, not the words that Abu Hanifa has said. And you have find many people of those who follow the madahid hmm, who say something similar. And the problem is, it's always easy. You can, when you hear the truth, you hear it and you understand it. But the problem is, at the end, People will not tell you, oh, you are wrong because this ayah say this. You are wrong because this hadith say this. No. Are you right and Abu Hanifa is wrong? Are you right and Ibn Taymiyyah is wrong? He can see that. He, he, he tell you, yeah, I understand what you are saying. I can see it's right. Huh? But like the when Ibrahim, when Ibrahim, the Prophet came to his people and he asked them he destroyed the, the idols that they were worshipping and when they came and asked who destroyed them he said the big, the big one destroyed them ask them if they talk ask them if they can speak so they went back to the cells they went back to themselves 
they don't speak, oh, they are, we are doing something wrong. These people can't even speak, can't even defend themselves. But then Allah said, ثم نكسوا على رؤوسهم And then they went back. لقد علمت ما هؤلاء ينطقون First, they thought about it, they accepted it, and then they sit together and okay, are we right and our parents are wrong? All these people are wrong? And then they went back to that misguidance. Hmm? The, the story, there is a, a joke, a story. It's not a joke, a story, a funny story. They say someone was, someone uh, ate food and then he fell unconscious. unconscious. People thought he died. His family, his family started uh, pushing, pushing him to take him to, to bury him. Then while pressing on his back, he woke up. Then they told him, well, we have invited, we have told people that you are dead. <laughs> people will make fun of us. People will talk about us. You just have to, to sleep. We are going to bury you anyway. <laughs> no, th this is not the, the funny uh, side of the story. The, so these people said, okay, uh, we are not going to make fun of ourselves. They put him, he, th he thought, now if I insist, they will kill me. In that village, when someone dies, after the prayer, after they do the janazah, they take him to the graveyard which is at the end of the village. <coughs> there, there is the palace of the leader of the village. They will stop next to the palace, the man will do dua, fatiha for the man, before they bury him. He said, okay, this is my occasion. When I arrive next to the palace, when they stop me there, the leader will come out of the balcony to, to do the prayer. What I will do, I will wake up, stand up, and tell him in front of everybody that I am alive, and then they can do nothing. Everybody will be witness. So they took him. <coughs> when they arrived next to the palace, the leader came out, the man stood up, and said, I am not dead. Just these people want to bury me. <laughs> the leader looked at him, and then looked at the hundreds or thousands of people who are following the janazah. And he said, do you want me to accept your word? Huh? To, do you want me to take your word? You are saying the truth and all these people are liars. <laughs> so this is what happens normally. Huh? You say something, everybody understands it and say, oh, you are right and everybody is wrong. And everybody, sometime, is just following, doesn't know what he is following. The uh, mistakes that I was going to, to, to mention, because we are going to make, to mention something about Qiyas, and Qiyas sometimes look like, oh, these people are saying something absurd. Huh? But before we go there, see, <coughs> Imam Abu Hanifa says, <laughs> Imam Abu Hanifa says, and it's not his mistake, it's the mistake of the people who took this thing without, without thinking about it. For example, <coughs> this is the madahib, uh, the, the, the four madahib saying, if, like, during prayer, there are some actions that are forbidden, you shouldn't talk. You talk in your prayer, your prayer is invalid. During fasting, you eat or you approach your wife, then your fasting is invalid. You go to Hajj, and there are specific things that Allah said don't do in Hajj. Like, don't approach your wife, don't hunt. If you do one of these things, then your Hajj is invalid. <coughs> the, uh, <coughs> because of the Madhab saying that any sin that you commit while you are worshipping Allah during prayer or fasting or Hajj will not invalidate your prayer or your fasting or your Hajj. Doing, hajj, doing a sin during your worship, you're doing a sin 
during your worship will not invalidate your action of worship. This is the majority, the saying of the majority. Ahnaf, Hanbalis, Malikis. Hmm? That resulted in this saying that if someone go to Hajj and approaches his wife, has a relation with his wife, then his Hajj is invalid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ There is no Rafat, no woman approaching in Hajj. But he says, but he says, if someone rapes a man during Hajj, because it's not mentioned, his Hajj is valid. See how, how bad is this saying. He says that if a Muslim kills another Muslim, uh, if a Muslim kills a Kafir, if a Muslim kills a Kafir, he should kill. He should be killed. You may not find this very, uh, very something which is, uh, uh, yeah, like strange. But people at the time when he said it found this strange. The first rebellion against the Khalifa, the first Harun al-Rashid was had grasp on the authority. Nobody could in his time do anything. Nobody, he had never, uh, people rebe never rebelled against Harun al-Rashid. But when Abu Yusuf, the student of Abu Hanifa, who was the head of the judges, decided to kill a Muslim who killed a kafir, and the Rasul Sallallahu say, the Prophet says clearly that a Muslim shouldn't be killed because of a kafir. When Abu Yusuf said this, you had all Baghdad, at the time the Khilafah was in Baghdad, we had all Baghdad coming out and they encir the, the <laughs> encircled the palace of Harun al-Rashid until they released the man. One of the mistakes of Imam Malik said, Malik say, if someone has a daughter and this his daughter or his wife is taken by the Kafirs as in, in war, she was kidnapped by the Kafirs. And this Kafir now have an agreement with us. We make an agreement with these Kafirs and they come to our country with uh, our wives, with our daughters, and they have them as slaves, they have relation with them, they force them into relation because they are their slaves. Then we should do nothing about it. We just watch and don't say anything because we have an agreement, we have to respect the agreement. This is something that doesn't contradict Quran and Hadith. And I'm not going to into details, but this is one of the things the other madahib huh, say, how could he have said this? Huh? Same thing what Abu Hanifa has said. We go to Shafi'i for example, Abu Shafi'i say, if there is water, because uh, according to the hadith da'if that he takes, Sorry. according to the hadith which is weak that he takes, that the water when it is 150 liters, we have spoken about this last time, then this water, <coughs> if, you, if, if a drop of uh, dirt fall in it, like urine, this water is impure. It's, you can't use it to drink, you can't drink it, you can't use it at all. That is if a drop of water in 150 liters. He say, if you add one spoon of water to the 150, that becomes 150 liters and a spoon, hmm? and you put one liter of urine, that's fine, the water is clean. So this is something, just because people, uh, the uh, always when they hear something, they don't try to look, oh, why this person has said what he has said? Just because I feel this thing is wrong, I will just reject it and reject the person who said it. Huh? Doesn't matter where he got it from. Okay. These things, I think, anyone who hears these things, 
clearly say it's it's wrong. Hmm? I mention them because if they are wrong, <laughs> when you hear when you hear it, you think you, you feel it's wrong, and because it's when you take the dalil as well, the proof huh, from Quran and Sunnah, you can prove it to be wrong. Hmm? Abu Shafi'i, for example, say the hair is a life. Hair is life. Uh, everybody hair is life because it grows. So, if you cut it, that is a dead, like dead meat. And because it's dead, it's dirty. So if you are praying and you have one hair falling on your clothes, your prayer is invalid. But no one has said this before him or after him. Hmm? Yes, Shafi'i saying this. And of course, Imam Ahmed says one of the biggest things ever. Huh? Uh, that is one of the biggest mistakes ever. He takes one hadith literally that says that Allah has created Adam on his image. And that caused him to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, looks like he, he has an image like Adam. And this is one of the things that nobody has agreed with him. And it's a big mistake. These people have done mistake. It's a mistake. This mistake, inshallah, what we think, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them an ajr for it. A reward. It's a mistake. But, inshallah, they will get a reward for it. They were trying to please Allah. To, they were trying to say the thing that they, are right, they, they think is, is right. I mention this just because... When we talk, when we will talk Qiyas, we will talk other. We will mention other people. Ibn Hazm, and then who is Ibn Hazm? Oh, Ibn Hazm who said, Ibn Hazm who said, if a, a dog licks in a bowl, you should wash it seven times. But if the dog falls in the bowl, doesn't matter. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, but you have heard the other things as well. So I am just trying to bring a balance here. <laughs> To make everybody equal. <laughs> uh, I was going to talk about this taking the apparent, what is apparent from the, the words, huh? the apparent from Quran and Sunnah. This is something that the Muslims, the Muslims have agreed on, except two groups, the Shia, and the Batiniya, the Qaramita, we call it the Batiniya, Shia and Batiniya. They say we do, shouldn't take the words of the Prophet, we shouldn't take the words of Allah literally on the apparent meaning. People may think, that, oh, this is the Dahiris who say this. No, this is agreed upon by the Muslims, that you have to take the words of Allah literally. Generally, this is agreed on. The Shia, of course, the, 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 the Shia say the words of Allah, the words of the Prophet, only the Imams can understand them. And then they go and uh, translate, explain Quran the way they like. Wherever, any ayah in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, slaughter cow, they say, meaning slaughter Aisha. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, he mixes the two seas, they say, he, that is, Fatima and Ali marrying each other, uh, Ali marrying Fatima, mixed together. From these two seas comes pearls and marjan, another thing that comes from the sea. They say this is Hassan and Hussein. Stuff like this, playing with Quran, but not taking the literal meaning of Quran. And we have the other group which is called Batini. Batini, everything has apparent, uh, Zahir and Batin. The Zahir is the apparent, and the Batan is the hidden. So there was these people who had called Bataniya. They translate Quran the way they like. These people were at what point they took control over Mecca. They destroyed the Kaaba and they stole the black stone for a long time. This is the Batanis. If you are not a Batani, if you are not a Batini, if you are not someone who take the hidden meanings of the words, then you are a Dahiri. <laughs> the name is a Bid'ah, to call yourself Dahiri. 
But if you don't take the hidden meanings of the words, that means you take the apparent meaning of the words. There is no something in between. And this is when the people say, oh, these people follow Quran and Sunnah literally. They take the apparent meaning. Everybody, the truth is, everybody agree on this rule. Whether they apply it all the time or not, that is the, the thing. But as general rule, everybody agree on it. That you find this, any book you take, huh? any tafsir you take, they will mention a lot of tafsir, a lot of things. You find Ibn Kathir, Ibn Jarir Tabari, Qurtubi, they will mention a many explanation to the ayah and then say, but we go with this because this is what the apparently, the apparent meaning of this ayah. So we go with it. But they don't maintain that. Sometimes they have to, not to go to with the, the apparent meaning because probably the imam say this, because his imam say that, or because his madhab say that. <coughs> the word has apparent meaning. Some people say it has a hidden meaning. Okay. The hidden meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ لَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That no one knows what's on the heaven and on the earth. The hidden, except Allah. So, we have to, to follow the apparent. Because the hidden, no one knows it except Allah. So if Allah chooses to teach us this hidden meaning in his book, we will take it. Hmm? Because how do we know it? From the words of Allah, from the words of the Prophet. But one person just like this, a person who come and say, this word in Arabic means this. But here it doesn't. Here we have to give it a different meaning. From where? How do you know that? We have, we must always follow the apparent meaning of the words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught Adam the names, all the names. And these names have been taught to people, generation by generation, every nation in its own language. When someone talks to you and tells you, put your clothes on, doesn't mean go and eat food. Hmm? When someone tells you, don't say idle talk, don't talk any idle talk, doesn't mean don't play music. So, if someone say here, it means this, tell him from where? Did Allah say it? We take it. Did the Prophet say it? We take it. He doesn't talk from himself. Whatever he says is revelation. Anyone else? He must explain. We need explanation. Where he got it from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized, criticized the Jewish. What did he say about them? يُحَرِّفُونَ الْكَلِمَ عَمَّ وَاضِعِهِ They misplace the words they take the words from their places. What's the, the place of the word? The meaning of the word. You hmm? harifun, smeng, distort. Distort. Yeah. The Jewish, they distort the words from their places. This is not taking the word in the apparent meaning. And this is Allah criticizing the Jewish for doing that. So we shouldn't really distort the words from their places. We have to take the words the way they are. Until is proven that this word here doesn't mean what people know. Like prayer. Prayer. The word prayer, you say it to any Arab, he will not understand that facing the Qibla, Standing and bowing and he will not understand that. He will understand making dua. Praying. The way the English 
when we say praying, we are praying, ask Allah for something. This word was taken from its place, changed. But who changed it? Allah changed it. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, salah, offer your prayer. The Prophet said, Pray the way you saw me praying. So we know here that the prayer that Allah has ordered us is not that the prayer that we used to know. So this word has changed. Change it, Allah and the Prophet. It's fine, we don't have problem with that. Someone else, he must say from where he got it. I just mentioned the taking the apparent meaning because uh, it has to do with the Qiyas. Hmm? Qiyas is this, is Allah giving a commandment, a hukm for about something. And we look, we see something similar, we give it the same hukm. Uh, can you can you put it in the different uh, Basically, take taken a taken a, a, when there's no proof or something. They they when they believe there's no proof or something, they take an ayah, a verse of the Quran or hadith, and the ruling that is applied to that hadith or that verse, they apply it to that thing which they are. It's not mentioned. That is not mentioned. You see, you take something in that is in religion. They think that has not been mentioned in Qur'an or Sunnah. That the ruling has not been mentioned in Qur'an and Sunnah. And then compare it to something that has been mentioned, and the truth, everything has been mentioned. The thing that has not been mentioned, are Allah didn't forget them. Hmm? He just left them. Do whatever you want, according to the rules. Hmm? There is rules for that as well. So they say something has not been mentioned. For example, the Prophet has spoken about the donkey. And he said it's haram. But they can't find that Allah has spoken about horse. <coughs> which when we look, it looks like a donkey. <coughs> so since Allah has made the donkey haram, and the horse look like the donkey, we give it the same ruling, and we say it's haram. This is what is Qiyas. Hmm? Qiyas is to take something that has not been mentioned in Quran and Sunnah, compare it to something that, look, look at the similarities. It's the similarity that it has with something that has been mentioned in Quran and Sunnah, and give it the same ruling. This Qiyas consists of things. Now, the thing that has been mentioned in Quran and Sunnah, they call it the root. Like here, the donkey will be the root. The thing that has not been mentioned, it has been compared to the other thing, is called the branch. The ruling here is haram. The reason, and the reason, the illa, we call it illa. Why do we, we will look? Why did Allah make the before we do a qiyas? We ask always this question: Why did Allah make this thing haram? So why did Allah make haram the uh, donkey? So they think and okay because it carries the stuff of people. Hmm? It carry you can use it as transport and the horse. You can use it as transport. So, it is haram. Because Allah made this haram, this one should be haram as well. This is Qiyas. What is their proof for this Qiyas? Their proof for this Qiyas, they have never agreed on proof. What Shafi'i say is a proof, Qadi Iyad deny it. He said this can't be a proof. And they bring something else. And Ibn Suraj bring another proof. And Ibn Taymiyyah bring different proof. And Ibn Qayyim bring different proof. And no, everybody criticizes the proof that other person has brought. Abu Shafi'i says in his proof 
that uh, Qiyas is allowed and actually his people stopped saying it because they thought it was it was very weak hmm? he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said all you who believe kill not gain while in the sacred precinct in the state of pilgrimage and any of you doth so intentionally whoever kill while in state of ihram the compensation the compensation is an offering brought to the kaaba so you kill a game you bring a compensation a similar a domestic animal equi equivalent to the one he has he has killed as judged by two just men amongst you so he said this is the lead about qiyas everybody else who heard this because you you heard it now you don't understand it but if you think oh if Shafi'i said it, it must be right no it is not right and it has nothing to do with Qiyas actually and everybody who came after Shafi'i including the Shafi'is those who follow Shafi'i couldn't even talk about it. they disregarded it they tried to bring more proofs hmm? because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you, it's Allah who ordered us to slaughter something huh? in compensation of killing something else. Qiyas is not this. Qiyas is Allah making making something haram huh? or making something an obligation, obligation and you come and do something similar. Qiyas in this case will be this. Okay, since someone has killed something that belongs to Allah because the game doesn't belong to anybody he must offer something in compensation then the Qiyas will be if someone kills a human he must go to Kaaba and sacrifice another human something this is Qiyas He must buy a, a human being, slave, and sacrifice it in Kaaba. If you do Qiyas, this will be Qiyas. Qiyas is something. Always, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something, huh? say something, you have to do something similar. This ayah has nothing to do with Qiyas, <coughs> said, and it actually nobody ca could understand what Shafi'i has understood. Of. And they criticized it, those who are not from his madhab, those who are from his madhab, just disregarded it and tried to bring more proofs like Ibn Suraj Ibn Suraj said this he said this ayah وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَى أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the, the, the hypocrites who started spreading uh, rumors in Medina when the Prophet, it was said that the Prophet has divorced his wife, his wives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the Munafiqeen and some weak Muslims started spreading this remorse around in Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ رُدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ If instead of publishing, publicizing these rumors, they went back to Allah and the Prophet, those who do istimbat those who extract those, those who extract things would have known it so uh, they said extracting extracting is qiyas because you have to go deep inside the uh, meaning of the words to understand to, to, to get rulings so this is one of the strongest uh, proofs for Qiyas actually this is one of the strong, strongest proof of Qiyas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that those who extract things could have known it so there are some people who can extract things and some people who can't Let's say how people extracted these things. How uh, Umar al-Khattab, 
who say this ayah was revealed, revealed because of him. Umar ibn Khattab says this ayah was revealed for this reason. He said that, I heard that the Prophet divorced his wives. I went to the Prophet. I saw people outside crying. The people are crying outside because they believe the rumors that the Prophet has, uh, uh, has di uh, divorced his wives. He answered to the Prophet, knocked on the door and asked him, Did you divorce your wives? He said no. He said this ayah was revealed because of that. So how did Umar al Khattab extract the truth? By going doing qiyas or looking at the deep meaning of the words? No. He went to the Prophet and asked him. And this is what we say. Every time you have <coughs> Something you, you don't know the ruling of, hmm? go and look in Quran and Sunnah and you will find it. The Quran is going to Allah. When you go to Quran, you are going to Allah. When you go to the Prophet, when you go to the Sunnah, you are going to the Prophet. The proof that uh, Ibn Taymiyyah has said, Ibn Taymiyyah said, In Allah, I am Rubil Adli wal Ihsan. Allah has ordered. Allah or, has ordered the justice, hmm? has ordered you with justice, with justice and excellence. Mm -hmm. So he said, justice is this. Justice is two similar things must take the same ruling. And I tell you, everybody who hear this thing, everybody you know, who is. Uh, uh, who has spoken about these proofs, even though those people who are for Qiyas didn't know to what to say really. He was like, the word baffled. He doesn't know how does someone like this man, huh, with his knowledge, will bring this Dalil and say this is Qiyas. Huh? In Allah I amru bil adl. That's mean. Uh, uh, the donkey, that the horse should be haram because the donkey is haram. The justice is what Allah has made just. Whatever Allah has uh, said is halal, that, st that thing should be considered halal. Whatever Allah has considered, said it's haram, that thing must be haram, considered to be haram. This is the justice. Hmm? The justice is to follow what Allah has said. Hmm? It, justice is not to be taken from our... Uh, from, from our intellect. Justice in that case, people will say, what these people are saying? Huh? A woman should go outside. If the man can go outside, a woman should go outside. If a man can marry for a woman, then a woman can marry for a man. If we take it, but justice is what Allah has said. Huh? Anything that Allah has said, that is just. It, just. Anything that contradicts the book of Allah, that thing is wrong. The Dalil of Ibn al-Qayyim, Ibn al-Qayyim said, مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَةٌ Said the Mushrikeen has asked, who will bring the bones to the, from death? Say that Allah will bring the, the one who gave it first life will bring it back. He said this is Qiyas. And uh, the people who came after Ibn Qayyim, when they mentioned this, they didn't bother to give an answer. Because <laughs> Qiyas is not that something is similar to something. Everything is similar to everything. Anything that you take, you want is similar. A human is similar to the sky, is it? There is a similarity between human and the mountains. They are both created by Allah. <laughs> yeah, they say we take two similar things and we give them the same ruling. Anything in the world, take any two things in the world, they are similar to each other in one 
uh, one particular or more? O only there is one thing similar. What? The haqq al Yeah, they are both similar. They, are, they have sim something similar. Because haqq is created by Allah and batil is created by Allah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, anything, anything, uh, yes. They both claim to be the truth. Who? Yes. Yes, that's true. That is another. This is another thing. The haq, the truth. Haq always say I am the uh, the truth, and the battle always say I am the truth. So they have something in common. The thing is, qiyas is not two things that are. We say this thing is similar to this thing. This is not the qiyas. Qiyas is. This thing is haram or halal because it looks like this thing which is halal or haram. Two things that look similar or are similar. One of them is haram from the book of Allah. The other thing must be haram. This is qiyas. So if we have to apply this qiyas about the ayah, the ayah says that Allah will bring to life the bones the way he, made the, he gave them life in the first time. This is two things similar. If we do Qiyas here, we say since when he gave them life first time, he gave them orders and he asked them to worship him and they had to, to go through uh, hardship and uh, they have to, to, to obey Allah and to obey the orders and to have to be tested. That means the second time when he will bring them, they will have to go through the same thing. This is Qiyas. The other example that Abu Ibn Qayyim said, he said, of course he didn't stop here, he said, Quran is full of examples. He said, Quran is full of examples. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ And this is our examples, and those are examples, huh? or similarities. We show them to people, and no one will understand them except the alims. He said this is telling us that we should do qiyas. Allah, in his book, give examples. And qiyas is about comparing things. Allah, in his book, compare things. This is not equal to this, or this is equal to this. He say that means we should do the same thing. Do, uh, compare things to each other, and give them the same ruling. Yeah, but the thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true that he gives examples and compare things in his books, in his book. But he forbid us from doing that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he said that he give examples in Quran, This is examples and similarities that we show to people. The same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Don't 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 strike examples to Allah. He is, he does that, yes. We are not allowed to do it. He does that, we are not allowed to do it. If someone take this proof as the lead that we can do it, it's like someone who says, uh, we are allowed to swear by the sky, we are allowed to, sky, to, to swear by the stars, because Allah did it. Yeah, he did it, but he forbid us from doing it. It's like someone who say, I am allowed to kill people because Allah does it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kills people all the time. <laughs> yeah, everybody who dies, it's Allah who killed him. Anybody who dies, it's Allah who killed him. And then someone comes and say, okay, since Allah is killing people all the time, I am allowed to do that. That is wrong. We don't do what Allah has, is do, d does, we do what Allah ordered us to do, yes? Shaykh, what ayah is it, is it uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly? That is Surah Al-Nahl. Yeah. Surah Al-Nahl, but uh, the ayah number... 
So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden us from giving similarities to you see when <coughs> before you do qiyas before you do qiyas you have to do this before you do qiyas you have to ask question you have to say why did Allah make this haram before you do qiyas before you do qiyas about horse you say horse is haram you have to ask, ask this uh, uh, before you go to the horse you say why did Allah make the donkey haram this question sharia religion forbid this question because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said لا يسأل عما يفعل Allah is not to be questioned of what he does for what he does if he, if he says something is haram it's haram if he says something is halal it's halal and that's that's all you don't ask question why did Allah make this why did Allah uh, not do this we are not allowed to ask that question and therefore we can't extract the reason and if we can't extract the reason we can't use it you have always to extract the reason first before you can use it the uh, <coughs> we, will for, we will bring other examples now uh, the Qadi Iyad very famous from the Malikis Ibn Daqiq al very famous Shafi'i Ibn Suraj not Ibn Suraj stop it Shahristani Qasani Ibn Uqail from the Hanbalis said the truth is and they speak for the people who do Qiyas they say the truth is there is no ayah the ayah or hadith doesn't exist that says do qiyas you say it don't ex doesn't exist and you look at the quran and sunnah you won't find anything like this these people admit that there is no such ayah or hadith in quran or in sunnah that allows us to do qiyas or order uh, order us to do qiyas they say but this is what the people have been doing since the time of the prophet and Ijma'ah, can call it Ijma'ah. So really they don't have proofs about this Qiyas. The proofs that Qiyas is battle, inshallah, we will mention many. But let's go to the examples because last time we stopped in this example. When the Prophet said, if you anyone, this is the, the examples that uh, many people use. Okay, since you do Qiyas, you have to do this. Since you don't do Qiyas, you shouldn't do this. Now, the Prophet said, لا يَبُولَنَّ أَحَدُكُمْ فِي الْمَاءِ الرَّاكِدِ ثُمَّ يَغْتَسِرُ مِنْهِ If anyone, no one should urinate in the still water and then take a bath from it. We stopped last time here. Uh, we had to prove somehow uh, that the Prophet understands better than Umar al Khattab. I, I had this argument before with someone who says that I had an argument with someone who didn't agree that Umar al-Khattab is more knowledgeable than Abu Bakr. When I said Umar is not more knowledgeable than Abu Bakr, he said this is wrong and you are, you contradict the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and the majority of the ulama and okay. And we are, as we are talking about uh, the usul, we reach this state about Qiyas and then I mentioned the hadith about the Prophet taking the words literally of the Prophet and then he said yeah but Umar ibn Khattab uh, the brother last time mentioned this but the brother he said it just like uh, but this man had knowledge and he said but Umar ibn Khattab contradicted him I said yes and Umar ibn Khattab was wrong here and the Prophet was right he said no Umar ibn Khattab was right so he was arguing first he was arguing first about uh, Umar being less knowledgeable, uh, more knowledgeable than Abu, Abu, Abu Bakr he couldn't take it and at the end he is saying that Umar al-Khattab is more knowledgeable than the Prophet this is what happens when you have a madhab when you have to, when you are following a person or many people huh? 
and you don't want to contradict them. You will find it easy to contradict the Quran and Sunnah, but not to contradict these people. <coughs> the example of the water. Ibn Hazm said, the Prophet said, لا يبولن أحدكم في الماء الراكب None of you should urinate in the still water and take a bath from it. Take a bath or take a wudu from it. Now Ibn Hazm says, if someone urinate in the water, he shouldn't take a bath in it. Anybody else can. can. Anybody else other than the person who urinated can't take a bath from it, it is fine. And he says, yeah, I think this is what uh, the, uh, the thing that the uh, don't accept uh, from him. He says if someone urinate in a glass, for example, and pour it in the water, that's still fine. Because he didn't urinate in the water. That's Ibn Hazm saying this. Yeah, just... Uh-huh. Yeah. He say... Because he didn't urinate in the, inside the water. And this is one of the things that... If you try to say... To mention Ibn Hazm... Huh? People will say... Oh, the person who says this. Yeah. Ibn uh, Hazm is not uh, a prophet. He does mistakes. However... Let's... See what the other madhab opinions about this hadith. What does the Ahnaf say about this hadith? The Ahnaf say if the still water is more than the height of two people, or if the still water. If you move your hand in one side and it doesn't, the water doesn't move in the other side, then it's still, it's, you are okay, you can, you can use this water. You see, everybody from the four madhah, from the four madhah everybody from the four madhah say, if someone <coughs> urinate in water that is running, urinate in water that is running. Someone is urinating in this side, water running this side, someone doing wudu here, or taking a bath here, it's fine. So it's almost similar thing. They are taking the words of the hadith literally. You see, that water, that water where he is urinating is going through. And they will take a bath with that water. They say it's fine. The former I have said it's fine as long as the water is running. So they say, what about what about the person? Uh, another example. Abu Hanifa, for example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that forbidden for you are the mothers, your mothers, from suckling. If someone suckles from a woman, she becomes haram for him. She, he, she is his mother. Mm-hmm. Al-Layth ibn Sa'ad says, if the, ma- if the woman, if a woman uh, take the milk, put it in glass, mm-hmm. and give it to, dr- to a boy to drink, she is not his mother. So he can marry her. Abu Hanifa says if a woman take the milk inside the glass or inside a pot and you put bread in huh, uh, for a baby and you feed him with that milk and the bread, she is not his mother. He can marry her. Malik says if a woman take milk from her breast and pour water in it, with it, and give it to a boy, drink it, he is not her son. She can marry. 
See the difference between the mother that has suckled you hmm? and the mother that has poured the water, uh, taken the, the milk and give it to you in a glass. You see the difference? For those people who say Ibn Hazm has committed a grave mistake by saying if you take your urine and pour it in the water. It is similar. I don't agree with that, but just because if someone says this is wrong, yeah, this is wrong as well then. The thing is, <coughs> water, putting in anything dirty inside water, water is property. It's property. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden us from destroying property. It is haram to uh, contaminate water with anything. But if someone does it, if someone does it, then the Prophet has said it's haram for him to take a bath in it. Or to use it to wash himself. He didn't say it's haram for other person. If someone say what is the difference between the person who urinate in it and the person who didn't. The difference is like the difference between someone who has killed and the one who didn't kill. The one who has killed, we kill him, and the one who didn't, we don't. If two brothers, one kills and the other doesn't, we kill the one who killed, not the one who didn't. You see, if you have a dam with a lot of water in it, and someone dam, hmm? dam, dam. 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 Uh, okay, if you have, I am French accent. There. If you have a dam uh, and someone you come and urinate in it, we apply this hadith on it, on him. We apply this hadith on him. Because he has done this, the Prophet, Allah has punished him by making him, by forbidding him from using this water. But what, uh, what, uh, what sin other people have committed? Why are you going to stop other people from using this water? It's contaminated. It is not contaminated. Uh, millions of <laughs> gallons of water with... No, a small quantity, let's say 100 liters. We are not talking about a small yeah. quantity or not small quantity. We are talking about... We said last time that the hadith say that the, wa the water is pure. The water is pure. And it can't be contaminated until you see something in it. When it has changed, the color has changed, the smell has changed, or the taste has changed, then it's contaminated. But even if it's not contaminated, the person who urinates in the water shouldn't use it. It's haram for him. So others they can? The others can, yes. It's najasa, no? How it's najasa? We say the water, the Prophet was asked, say, say, take this hadith. That the majority takes Sahih. Take this hadith with the majority, including Bukhari, Tirmidhi, Ibn Hibban, Hakim, Ibn Khuzayma, say this Sahih. That the Prophet was asked. I don't, uh, I say these people take it Sahih. Yeah? Now, this hadith, according to this hadith, the Prophet was asked about the well of Buda'a. A place called Buda'a, there is a well in it. Huh? The Prophet was asked about the water of this well. They said we throw in it the dead meat, the dead bodies of dogs. Dogs. Dogs have been thrown inside. And the woman, uh, blood, menses, clothes, thrown in this water. Is it clean? And according to the hadith, he said yes, the water is clean. Yeah, because it's, it's not st stagnated. This is a well. Yeah, the well is not stagnated. No, oh, this well, how? Okay, oh. A well. Yeah, the, if the, the well, source. the well, the water comes from uh, uh, from underneath, underneath the, from earth. Huh? As if you don't take it, if you don't take, there is a limit. If you don't take from it, then no uh, no new water will come. If because uh, why the well doesn't the water doesn't go out. Because, yeah, there is, there is a limit. The pressure of the water will stop from uh, other water from coming in. 
So the, every time you take water, the pressure is eases, and the more water comes. But then the when it reaches one uh, a limit, it will stop. So people are throwing these things while the water is still. So it's not the, this water is not running. I just give this uh, this example anyway. For for qiyas. I was going to say in case of it changing color, smell, yeah, or texture, yeah, and in that case it will be clearly haram. Definitely, that is doesn't matter if if the dam, hmm, the dam, the dam, if uh, the the water changes, huh? If the water changes, no matter how, if the sea water changes, you see there is uh, you go to the beaches here. And the water is clearly changed its test, uh, then it's haram. It's yes. it's uh, not just it's a uh, dirty. What the recycled water is clean? Well, if it's if it's recycled, you can see proper uh, clearly that it's, it's water. Okay. It's water, and the, the, it tastes water, it smells water, and uh, the color is water. So water. it is water. The water is clean if you can. It, the water will stay always clean. You see, the way, the way, the clean things don't become dirty when they meet with the dirt. You see, someone tells you, if you touch dirt, your hand is dirty. Now, there is different kind of dirt. Water, for example, dirty water, if you touch it, there is no way you can take it from your hand except by washing your hands. But there is dirt which is solid. So when you touch it, there is nothing left on your hand. If someone tells you because you touched it, you are dirty, tell him why probably this dirt should have become clean. Because I am clean, I touched it. The clean thing, when it, it meets with the dirt, doesn't become dirty. And the dirt, when it meets the clean things, doesn't become clean. Except proof, with proof. If something is left... <coughs> if something is left on the clean thing, then it, it, definitely you have to get rid of it, you have to clean. Yeah, this is uh, this is the example of uh, uh, the uh, about qiyas. There is many things uh, in in qiyas. Uh, uh, we have spoken last time. I, d I don't want to go through the same thing uh, uh, again, but we try to bring more examples about qiyas. Now we say the qiyas is you look, you extract the illa, the reason why did Allah make this thing haram and then apply it on similar things. This illa they have been extracting all the time. Take this example for... Uh, uh, there is a hadith from Hassan al-Basri, which is not marfu'ah. It's not the saying of the Prophet. It's da'if. It's considered to be da'if. But the Prophet said, لا يرث القاتل ولا يرث. The killer shouldn't inherit. This is the rule that has been taken from this uh, hadith. That anybody who try to take something before its due time should be forbidden. We should forbid him from, take, from having this thing forever. They say, this man, the killer, who killed his father or his brother or his son, here is trying to take property before it's due time. He is not waiting until the person dies naturally. So here he is trying to take... So we forbid him. We make this ha thing haram for him. Taken from where? From this hadith. Which is da'if. Weak hadith. We look at the reason. The, 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 the killer shouldn't inherit. The reason what is it? 
he tried to take something before its due time. So anybody who tries to take something before its due time should make this thing should be be made haram for him. And then we we come to applying it. Now we apply it. If someone has committed adultery with a woman, this woman will be haram for him forever. This is not in the book of Allah. Hmm? This is not in Quran that if someone has committed adultery with a woman, it is haram. Hmm? But there is nothing in Quran that says this woman is haram for this man forever. If they do toba both, then they can get married. Uh, the, this here, this ruling, people may need it a lot in this country. Many people huh, who become Muslim. No, many people who become in this Mus uh, Muslim in this country. Uh, before they become Muslim, they have we, what we call uh, friends, a girlfriend, what they call it, yeah? And then they become Muslim. And then you apply this rule, anyone, if you go to a Maliki, you go to a Hanafi, he will tell you it's haram. Why? If he is applying his, uh, the rule of his madhab, he will say it's haram because of this rule. Whoever does try to take something before it's the due time, uh, this man is having a relation with a woman before it's due time. Due time is after marriage. This rule here is invalid. Taken from where? From Qiyas. But the people who do Qiyas don't do it all the time. They always misses some points. If we try to apply this rule now, if you try to apply this rule properly, if you believe this Qiyas is right, you have to apply it all the time. If we try to apply it properly, this is how to apply it. If someone eat in Ramadan before Maghrib, he should be forbidden from eating forever. Applying the rule. If someone he is trying to eat before the due time, you see, uh, sometimes you make a rule without thinking. If someone had a relation with his wife when she is in her messes, his wife should be made haram for him forever. Because it's before due time. And we give the example again about Qiyas from the... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Qur'an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Qur'an about the slaves about the slaves after marriage. He said, فَإِذَا أُحْصِنَّ فَإِنْ أَتَيْنَ بِفَاحِشَةٍ فَعَلَيْهِنَّ نِصْفُ مَا عَلَى الْمُحْصَنَاتِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ But the slave women, when they, are, when they get married, if they commit adultery, they have half of the punishment. When a slave girl commit adultery, she will have what? Half of the punishment of a, chase, uh, of a free woman. Three women will get a hundred lashes, the slave will get fifty. This is what Allah said. He said, if a slave co woman com commit adultery, she will have half of the punishment. He didn't say that a slave woman is equal to half three women. In everything. In everything. He didn't say that. He said, if she commit adultery, she will have half. Now the, 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 what the madahib, well the, the sects say about this. For example, if we take the Malikis, say a slave man, no, the, the, the Shafi'is and the, Hanb the Hanafis and the Hanbalis, say a slave man can't marry more than two women. You see, because they consider now a slave to be half human. <laughs> no, this is how the truth is. Now the mother, they say that the slave man can marry only two women. This half, we have to apply it now 
but Malik don't agree. They say that if a slave woman, a slave man, if he divorces his wife twice, then his wife is forbidden for him. It should be normally three, three times. They can't make it one and a half because you can't, you can't say divorce your wife one and a half times. So you have to do, so they say they make it two. So if a slave divorces his wife twice, his wife is haram for him now. She must marry another man before she marry him. What about the period? She must wait for two months, not three. What about, there is something called ila, a man swear that he will not approach his wife. Normally you should give him time, four months, whether either he must go back to his wife or divorce. Some of them say the slave will give him two months only. So this is Qiyas. It's because Allah subhanahu wa said in this ayah that if a slave girl commit adultery, you give her half of the punishment, it became all half, half, half everywhere. Huh? But also, it's not maintained because no one say the slave must pray three prayers a day or for example he must pray Asr two raka'ah and Fajr one raka'ah nobody says that huh? nobody says if the slave kills by mistake instead of fasting two months he must fast one month nobody says if that a man, a free man, because a slave, they say a slave can marry two women, two free women, yeah? Nobody says that a man, free man, can marry eight free slaves, because you put them half, now, okay, two women will make one, one for one. The slave can't marry more than two, that's mean, a woman, uh, the, the free man, can marry eight slaves. But nobody says this. This is the Qiyas. This is the Qiyas which is not from the book of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُ فِيهِ اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا If it was from other than the book of Allah, if it was from other than Allah, you will find a lot of contradiction in it. This is Qiyas, the example, the this is the hadith that people who say qiyas in religion will bring. The Prophet has said, wheat for wheat, barley for barley, gold for gold, silver for silver, date for date, and salt for salt. Six things. Haka huh? wahat, take and give, hand for hand, Measure for measure. If you give more or ask for more, this is riba. This is uh, injury. So these six things, when you sell them, dates, salt, wheat, barley, gold, and silver, if you sell them, it has to be in the spot. I give you 100 gram of gold, you have to give me 100 gram of gold. Same time. And it has to be the same measurement, in the same time. If you don't do it, it's considered by Sharia to be uh, injury, riba. Now these people, Dahiris, say a prophet, the prophet mentioned six things and we stick to the six things. What do the other say? They will have to extract the reason why. Why did the prophet why did the Prophet make these things haram? We have to ask this question first. Okay. The reason that Abu Hanifa came with, he said because these things are measured, and probably his understanding is better than the others because the measurement is, is mentioned here. Abu Hanifa said, 
The reason is measurement. So anything that is measured shouldn't be sold except hand for hand and measurement for measurement. Anything that is potatoes, uh, carrots, uh, meat, anything that is when you sell it, when you buy it, you buy it by the scale. Hmm? Not cars, not houses, not it's fine. If you buy one car for two, a house for two, it's fine. But anything that is measured, it has to be hand uh, for hand and measurement for measurement. They say it's haram to buy to 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 buy one kilo uh, of almonds, huh? nice ones, for two kilo of the bad ones. Exactly the way the dates are haram. Exactly the way salt is haram. Silver, gold, the things that the Prophet has mentioned. What's the reason? Well, the reason they say is because of the measurement. There is some certain, say for example, uh, for, for the almond, uh, if I have, for example, someone has got uh, a shape or what you call it, mm. yeah? He has got, he wants to get some bad one. Yeah. He, he knows that people are not going to use yeah. it to, to get to his animal. So, you consider that to be halal? No, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. have any opinion. I tell you, this is what happens. If it's date, if it's date, it's, it's, I, I want a bad date. No. date <laughs> bad date, you buy one kilo for one kilo. If your dates are the best in the world, and my dates are the worst in the world, yeah. it still has to be one kilo for one kilo. The Prophet, this hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sent, sent Bilal to bring some dates. Mm -hmm. He brought the dates. When the Prophet saw them, they were very nice. The dates were very nice. So he said, all the days of Khaybar are like this. This is the days that the, the Jewish people left behind. And he said, all the dates of Khaybar are like, are like this. He said, no, we buy sah for two sah, like one kilo for two kilo. The Prophet said, oh, I know riba. This is exactly riba. What you do, you should sell your dates for money. And then with the money, buy the other dates. It's mean. I have two kilo dates which are bad, you have one kilo date which is good, my dates are one pound kilo, yours are two pounds. Normally I just give you my two kilo and you give me your one kilo. That is haram. What I do, I sell, I sell you my two kilo for two pounds and then with the two pounds that I have taken from you, I buy your one kilo. This is halal. So, the reason that, but if I do this with almonds, I consider this to be halal. Fine. Why? Because the Prophet didn't mention the almonds. He mentioned the dates, and the salt, and the barley, and the wheat. Maybe because there is no almond at the time. Well, there is no almond. There was other things. They had food in there. Right. They had raisin, for example, raisin, but he didn't mention it. They had uh, rice, he didn't mention it. And that's why we say rice is fine to buy for rice for rice. Kilo for kilo for two is fine. The reason that uh, Malik came with is different from the reason of Abu Hanifa. Malik said the reason here is because this thing gets stored, you store them. And because you store these things, so anything Anything that is stored can be so, can't be sold except hand for hand and measurement for measurement. The Shafi'i said, brought two different reasons. One reason is, he said, two reasons. One, it's because food, part of these things because they are food, so every food is haram to be sold except hand for hand. And the other reason is because things that are taken from the earth, gold, iron, anything that is taken from the earth. So that should be haram, except hand for hand. Compare these three things now. Compare these three sayings. For the people who say it, we just stick to what the Prophet has said. Huh? And think about this hadith. The Prophet has said, I have been given 
the eloquence of speech. And don't you think that the Prophet could have, if it was true, that these things are haram because of measurement or because of uh, the storage or because of the food? Shouldn't he have been able to say anything that is eaten or anything that is stored or anything that has it, that is being uh, is, is sold by measurement should be hand by hand? He should have done say that if he if it was true, but it wasn't. He said these th six things, and you have to stick to these six things. If he want to say more, he would have said it. So this is Qiyas. And the time is pri uh, for prayer now. Okay, inshallah. Uh, we continue, inshallah, next week. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.